Hello everybody, this is Wise Exotics. Um, mainly this is a channel where I show how my Nepenthes collection that's been growing is doing and or how it's been going so far. Uh, this is the end of February 2023 and we've got well, quite a variety of plants and uh, both lowland and highland in my collection as well as some other plants such as uh, Cephalotus uh, the uh, Keats by Sarcinia cross, as well as a pepper plant. Um, so usually I have a good, bad, what's gone down through February. Nothing really bad beyond, um, right here is my Ionate Killer cross Pulcria, um, Sun Pitcher or Helioflora. It is not doing well, I'm not sure, but I've had problems with this plant since I got it. It was severely damaged. It originally had three pitchers. In shipping, they were filled with rocks, and it tore them apart. And then about a month later, I got a pitcher, or a couple months later, I finally got another pitcher, and then that died recently. And then I got this new, it looked like a normal leaf, and now it's dying. So I've moved it out of the lowland, I moved it up with my highlands, so hoping it will try to pop back, the roots are still good. Um, the reason I think that is, uh, something like a Kate's by like this, uh, during the winter they die back and they're almost nothing. But as you can see, this one's already coming back really strong. Uh, this is one I got from California Carnivores a few years ago. Um, I also do have a Sarcinia cross purple haze in my front yard, it's been doing really fine too along with a sun pitcher. Now here in California, sun pitchers are actually pretty natural, I believe. They are a native plant. The one I have is called orange sherbet. It really liked the cold. It got like four to five times bigger. But again, that's in the front yard. I use it to remove pests such as um, aphids, ants, uh, gnats, things like that. And it does a very good job of it. So let's get into the lowland since we're here. Uh, I haven't had any problem in the lowland chamber now that I've figured out that this area is my kill zone, I call it. We did lose this, which I said at the beginning of the month it got barbecued. I'm still not sure how or what caused it, other than maybe the, the light above is too intense. So as we'll go in here, this is one of my uh, my really big good growers. This is a Goblasa class MPLR Black Miracle F2 beautiful red leaves. I really I really like this one's pictures because they're almost like a bubble globe. See, a new one just popped right there. Uh, it, it grows really well. Um, it's got the kind of speckling that you would see on a Black Miracle, but it's red, which I find really interesting. So, there's that. It looks like right here on Lemon Cherry on the side here. Lemon Cherry is a complex hybrid. I lost the picture that it had there. That's due to age, it doesn't really keep them very long. But it looks like I already have a new one coming on this pitcher, which is my newest leaf. I might have another one over on the other side there. It looks like there's also one right there. Lemon cherry, as if you want to see in the last video, is a very beautiful, very marble granulated, uh, red and yellow striped plant. It's extremely complex and I can never remember what it's got. Now, Moving over here, this is Globosa Rafflensia. I have several of these. This one has been problematic since I got it. It looks like it's coming back though. Initially when I got it, it had pink leaves, which was really interesting. And then it started to turn to green again, and then it shrunk, then it's coming back. So from there, uh, let's see. This is Nepenthe Suki. Looks like I have a pitcher way down there. This is a very slow growing Nepenthe. But it is supposedly rated as a lowland. I, Never understood why, but I mean, it, it popped two new leaves. It took six months for me to get one of those leaves to pop, and now it's already popping. So I think it's finally recovering from shock or whatever issue it had. Um, Nepenthes albomogari nata. I have two of them. Uh, it looks like the lid on this one's starting to go, so I might lose that picture. It looks like I have another one over there. It's sibling, which is what I call it. It's right below. It is a tissue cultured one. So these are the same type of exact species. I don't know if they're the same plant, say. These are my two really diverse sibling plants. One has red pitchers, one has this white speckling and striping. This was from Josh's Carter's plants, as you can see. This, this is the exact cross type it is. 
Infinity's Viking Sumatra X Viking Hagrena X Black Miracle. Uh, very pretty. It's also, this one also has a red speckling, similar to this one, but it, this is in a back cross, so it's very interesting. My pure Raffalencia finally is giving me another pitcher. I think it's starting to be happy. These ones have huge pitchers over here. These are the other Globosa Raffalencias, just like that little one there. These are all seed siblings, so if you're ever doing seeds, please note they all are very different. Now, this is my only other one that's kind of weird. It's a Cousin Genesis. Cross Ruffa, Cross Globasa, Cross uh, Black Miracle. It, it's Globasa, Cross. It's three different Globasa crosses back and forth. Uh, this is a Ruffalencia, Globasa, Bo Cross Black Miracle. It hasn't given me a picture in a while, but it looks like it's trying to. It's another slower grower, but not like these, which... These ones are really happy. Number one, number two are doing well. I used to have five of these because I got a pack of seeds and I was growing them. And they didn't do it as well. Now here's my other Globosa Ampulara F2. It does have red speckling, but this one is a little more sun sensitive. So I've moved it all the way over here, and it seems to be popping back with a new leaf tip. So there's that. Oh, this is a Nepenthes pinky, if anybody cares. It's a very simple, easy to grow. Nepenthes was something I was giving as a gift, but that person is not as good with plants. Uh, sorry, try not to sneeze. If you can see in here, Bearded Dragon is in the jungle. He doesn't care. Uh, most of these are Spectabilis crosses up here. And one of my favorite is this one, which is a VGI cross Spectabilis. Very large. Uh, it's larger than my finger. Uh, it's one of the largest pictures I own. Now, this is a Nepenthes Vivid machine, which you can get from Predatory Plants. I got two of them. One I initially purchased purposefully. The other one was for free because I purchase the other one. So I don't know. I got two out of it. So there's this one and this one. You can see quite a bit of difference between the two siblings. This one grows a lot faster, bigger, taller pitchers, uh, which is a Maxima S Vici X Platycaila X Maxima Tenentra. Uh, I'm reading the name there if anybody cares. That's Vivid Machine on both. Let's see, this is another complex one right here. Doing well, nice little pictures. Nothing super complicated. Uh, Mira X Ovata? No, Spectabilis X Ovata, I believe. No, Spectabilis X Mira. This, it had a new node, but didn't, didn't want to go. Let's see. These VCI X Spectabilis aren't as happy here. My Raja X Ima is just doing fabulous. Popped a new leaf, as you can see. It's very happy. Still doesn't want to give me a picture. Everything else is giving me pictures. If you can see up here, there's a picture from my Spectabilis X Vici. Right there. What's another one? Vici are a very interesting species. Uh, they're very diverse. Spectabilis are also kind of weird. As all Spectabilis I've ever seen, they like to do this ground curling where they curl to the ground. I wonder if I can show it. Via the netting, so you can see the the stem from this plant starts to go to the side and then it's coming up the side. Vici, I like to wrap around things. Spectabilis like to crown crawl. I don't know why really. Okay, now we're down here in the highland, which are the more sensitive ones, which have a dedicated humidifier. If I could, I would find another one to stick up above, but they're doing fine. Let's see. It looks like my Perbergity X uh, Glendiflora is doing really well. I have a new pitcher coming right here. This one has a very lovely pitcher. They are striped, spotted. Good amount of nectar coming off of this one, but they have a nice, you know, this one had a weird shape because it was when I transferred it over. Oh, it actually just popped a new one over here. So here's an even better, more vibrant, uh, what it normally would look like. So they go to this beautiful coloring, stripes, and then it darkens to almost like a caramel color. And here is a Clipiata X Vici X Lowii, which is about to, which just opened a new leaf. Uh, Hamada X Aristocroidoids. That's such a weird name, so I call them Aristos. Uh, the basil on this one is doing phenomenal. I think it's actually, if you compare it to the actual plant it's growing out of, it's actually bigger. It's doing really good. 
I will get into this thing later because they are a little more sensitive. I try to be a little more careful. My Alardi, Alardi, no, I, I'm uh, ex Glandiflora. Glandiflora Exima has two new pitchers. It looks like doing very well. Excuse me for a sec. I'm going to rotate the light so I can adjust. Okay. Now I can see. Uh, this red plant right here is a beautiful uh, Diabolica cross minima seed grown from AW. They did release that. a few of those. Uh, you could buy them. They were really tiny. This one I bought about uh, was this size. Cut these th new three leaves off. All my plants, after I get them, they get these huge <laughs> leaves, and then I get decent pictures off of them. So there's a balance between light and whatnot. Pictures are, the pictures these things develop, all these traps, like this one, which is an Ovada X, Rubicantlii, or Rubicantlii X Ovada. I keep getting things backward, I'm sorry. Um, the reason they develop pitchers is to make up for what lack of nutrients are in the soil. Majority of food and energy all these plants gain. Yeah, all these plants gain, huh, Polo? Polo is a bird behind me. I have two African greys in here as well as three lovebirds and one parakeet. So if you hear birds chirping in the background, jungly forest type, that that's why. Anyway, the, re the reason they developed this is just to kind of placate their bodies for a little extra nutrients that are not found in the soil as they don't normally have to hunt it so much in here uh, they do actually get plenty of flies and whatnot because of the bird seed have little moths and little flies that attach their eggs to the seeds they do fly around here since I brought these plants inside I have had zero visible <laughs> I want to say so they do a good job of hunting really well um, let's see, you can see a clipiata that is a pure grown clipiata, a pure seed <laughs> clipiata, I'm sorry. Next to it is my Hamada AW1, which looks like it's coming back. The leaf that was curling popped back up. I was, I've been really worried about this one. Uh, my other Hamadas are not giving me as much as a headache. I have, originally I had a female AW2 that got root rot and died. This one got root rot. Uh, Hamada is like a little more shade than normal since I've turned off the big spotlight so it's not on as much, which is right above my head here. Um, it's been doing really well. Uh, let's see. You can see over here, for some reason, my Peltata wants to go inside of this. So I'm going to try to separate the two. Uh, Peltata Raja, I don't think it has had any new ones. I can actually see way down there is a new little... Uh, picture spike from my Northiana. Let's see if I can get up. I think uh, it's really hard to get in here. So this is a Northiana. This is a very pretty species I find myself. Uh, it does have plenty of pictures. I was told when I initially started looking at Nepenthes to stay away from these because they are very sensitive. This is the BE33571 Northiana. I got it half that size and it's been doing very well for me. I don't know what I'm doing right, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> so far that one's doing really well and I'm happy about the same thing with the Diabolica crosses are doing really well. Uh, over here is a Diabolica Aristo cross and this is a Singul Singulana cross Diabolica. I like to say that. Yeah, Singulana cross Diabolica. This one had root rot. It's coming back now, I'm very happy to say. You can see the new leaf jump. This thing had initially had huge leaves and giant pitchers. I mean, they were the size of my hand with teeth. It was beautiful. It was called Metallica, I believe, this, uh, when I bought it. That's what they called it. Anywho, it's coming back. It's doing really well. Uh, in here are some Vici. Uh, nice big leaf jump on this one. And that's my Batabuli. Usually uh, they have decent leaf jumps like that one, which is my pink candy cane X Big Mama, which is a well-known one of Carnivero. I do love their plants. Uh, this one is a VGI from uh, Malibu Basin, which is a protected area, but you can get them. Um, no huge leaf jumps, just simple leaves so far. All right here is my enormous one, which is the Mike Fallen K1 Cross M2. As you can see, it's about the same age as the others, but its leaves are huge. It's 
pictures are huge. This is going to be a very big plant. I was not expecting it. Next to it is my Cephalotus, my only surviving one so far. My other one isn't doing as well, so I'm not going to probably... This is the newest one I got. It's purple. I just like Cephalotus to compare to. They are a convergent evolution. Uh, as I said, Robicanli Exavata. Nice new uh, leaf jump there. Same thing with the Truncatas. Overall, all the plants are doing really well. You can see a nice new picture just popped over there. I do have, uh, like right here, is a Raja X Mira seed grown. Doing really well. Nice big leaves. I really look forward to seeing their pictures. Some of these don't give a picture for a long time. So it's just Peltata. Peltata, for some reason, does not want to give me picture bits. It's got leaf jump, but it looked like I have a new picture node there. They're just very slow. Now, if everybody hold on for a sec. Hi, welcome back. Sorry for that quick little intermission. The tank I'm now looking at is my Ultra Highland, and by which I mean my more sensitive plants that I'm very cautious with, so I don't want to leave this open too long. I do routinely open this once in the morning, once at night. For those of you curious about growing Ultra Highlands, what am I doing? Uh, my temps dropped about 55 at night, and uh, I have a glass room. They can get up to 100 plus in the summer, but usually for normal spectrum, it's within 70s, 76 is the highest it ever gets on this side. But due to summer heat, I do have an air conditioner that I can wheel in here and keep all the plants and whatnot safe. And, you know, sound, I can even bring them inside. The highest I've seen these be able to maintain against is about 86. I have never got a 95 on them directly, so I just want to make that small note. These I'm very cautious with. For good reason, right? They're very pricey or just really hard to come by. So this is a Robopantlii uh, seed grown that I got last year. It only had two leaves when I got it, now it's four. They're very slow to grow. As you can see from these little spots, that's where water droplets hit. Robocantlii is very sensitive to being watered on on the leaves and pitchers, so do not do that. Let's see, this is a Nepenthes Naga. It looks like I got a new pitcher. It's getting some color in it. Very interesting. Uh, it looks happy. Uh, it has a huge leaf jump. As you can see, I got it when it was really tiny, and this thing's new leaf and pitcher is so big, it's pulling the plant apart. As I said, I usually get a plant, it goes from this to a leaf that doubles in size, if not more. Now we're going to go down the line here. This is my Raja. As I said, my Raja had a new leaf, slightly doubled the size of that one, and then that one already has a doubled size, and its new pitcher already popped, and it's very happy. There's also a, as you can see, this little tiny pitcher right here is connected to a basil. Per what somebody was telling me, Rajas at this age are really well known to basil. I don't know, my first two died that were the size of the basils, so, you know, live and learn. I've learned something new. Uh, this is my Hamada Lumint variant. Yeah. Gun uh, Gun Gunlug Lumint variant. Uh, this is the AW4 male. Uh, very nice pictures. It's, as I said, this, this Hamada's been perfectly fine. Uh, I like to say it seems to be a little more durable than this one, which is the BE one, which is the BE3975. Uh, this is the Tambusi uh, variant. The leaves on this are a little more sensitive. You can see it, it actually got like a little sunburn, but now that I moved it further back away from the light, it it's not been getting sunburned at all on the other leaves. So, But nice coloring and shape coming off of that one already. Going down, this is uh, lemon, lemon cherries only surviving seed simply. As I had three of them, one grew really big, two stayed small, and continued to not do as well. But this one seems to be doing well. As I said, I did my own mixture on all these plants, and they seems to be doing all right. This beautifully very vibrant plant, if you compare to the colors of the others, is a Velosa cross Hamada. Someone told me it's like 400 something dollars. I did not pay that. <laughs> I did not pay that. So I got it on a deal. I'm pretty good about finding plants on deals. I just look around and try to see what's going on. And if I find one at a decent cost, I make an offer or I buy it. That's just how it works. I'm pretty happy with what I have, so I'm not really hunting right now. But I just want to show, look at the nice, vibrant, 
toothiness these have. I love the colors. It's already got all, all the color and shaping is starting to come in. I can't wait till it does a more adult mature picture. Next to it is a Raja X Edwardsiana. This is a rare plant to find because Edwardsiana, to my understanding, are a pain in the butt to grow. They like to be an intermediate when they're an ultra highland, so they have a very sensitive range and need a high humidity to a degree, whatnot. This one's been fine in the way I've been growing it. It's, yeah, it gets a new leaf chump every time almost. Nice big pictures. They're tall like an Edward Sienna with like a Raja opening. I mean, this is a really complex plant. It's just one that I have two of and I stick this little one in here. If you've seen my other videos, you know which one this is. If you're new, uh, it is that one. So pause your screen and look at it there, but that's the exact same species. Now we'll get into the middle here. So this is one of my pride and joy. These are kind of like the three I really try not to let die or have any problems with, if anybody has understanding of that. So this is a Diabolica. Diabolica are like Northiana to an extreme. They're very sensitive, very hard to handle and take care of. The BE one is extremely well known to be so sensitive, you do anything wrong, sneeze, don't do anything wrong, it'll die. It's that hard of a plant to grow. The AW, which is this one, is a confirmed female, uh, number four, Diabolica, female. It is a stable grower, I've had no problems. If you notice the speckling on the lower leaves, to my understanding when I spoke to a few growers, that is actually common. It's not a disease, it's not anything. It's kind of like if you look at Black Miracle, they get black speckling. For whatever reason, that's a beneficial trait this plant has grown to have, just an FYI. So if you ever do get one and are worried, I already have a new picture opening there. I'm not too sure what happened to that one. Uh, but this one has been doing, opened and it's been well, nice toothy. It's got all the diabolical look, I'm happy to say. Also looks like I have another picture right here opening soon. That one, I don't know what happened to it. I got another one right here. It is a very slow to grow plant. I want to make that very apparent. If you even think about wanting to look at the Ultra Highlands, they're all very slow to grow. This Robo Cantley, for instance. To give a better thing, this is my Macrophilia. I've been growing this for a year plus. It's been, it was grown initially in 2018. So this is how big it is from all those years. And I've had leaf jumps since I got it because I got it about the size of that thing. So, and I, I did some cleanup recently on it. It's doing very well so far, no problems. I, I have constant pitchers on it, constant leaves. It seems to be unlike other plants, it, it doesn't like to keep its leaves as much. Uh, like certain things like this, Raj Edwardsian, I, it rarely ever sheds a leaf or a pitcher. This one tends to do it fairly moderately. So uh, the second it pops out a new pitcher and leaf, it then tries to, it starts removing one of its older pitchers and leaves. So. It's a common thing. It's kind of like Diatis here. Diatis, if you actually want a plant that's toothy, kind of like a Hamada with teeth, bright red with yellow and all that, Diatis are your way to go. I don't know why this one has such a tiny little lid, but uh, I have two different Diatis, uh, and they do really well. Next to it here is my newest um, inclusion into my thing, and I'm very, very... Scary. It already just pop it literally just popped a new leaf uh, yesterday. It already has a picture on it growing really well. This is a Nepenthes velosa seed grown. Uh, this is from a local seller in the states. So he had a bunch of them. I made a bid, 120. Yeah, not kidding. 129 dollars exactly for that. I see these go for like hundreds. So. I'm happy when I get them at a discount or a low cost just because I'm paying attention. Uh, looking, eBay is a good source, but so is, you know, looking on forums and whatnot and see what people have. I know here in California we actually have a Bay Area Cardiverous plant show that occurs, and that's where I bought a bunch of mine that were from local sellers. So I got my Batabuli, all that stuff. Uh, he, he was like 30 minutes away, apparently. It was like, oh, cool, I can just buy from you. Uh, I just find them at a decent cost. Uh, if they're asking, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for some of these plants, I understand the rarity and whatnot, but 
personally for me, I can't afford that, so I just look for the bargain bin ones, sorry to say. If uh, they grow really well, I, I really want to see them develop and see how they shift and change from when I initially get it. Every day with these plants is a different experience, as you can see, like uh, the coloring, the shape, the size, each leaf node grows for a specific reason. I'm also, tr I do some experiments every now and then on my plants, uh, like seeing you know, how they can grow outside. My Queen Malini actually did grow outside and she is my largest plant. I grew in, inside of a tree, which was an avocado tree if anybody cares. Uh, she is up above, give me a sec. So, very vigorous plant. That's because somebody handled it when I wasn't here and broke it and also damaged my other pitcher, so I lost my other pitcher. But she's already got new one coming. But I love her leaves. They're very waxy, uh, strong, very durable plant. Uh, great desk uh, top plant. I keep thinking of putting her on my desk when I'm at work or something. But I don't know, as you can see, if you can see inside, there is liquid sloshing around there. It's right about there. I've actually seen her catch hornets before, uh, a bunch of them, which I don't like hornets, so that's fine with me. Uh, it grew outside perfectly fine. It didn't. It, this plant tends to pitcher not super frequently, but when it has pitchered, they're a little more solid. So, if you find you have an and you want to see kind of like, oh, what type of plant, just kind of feel the pitcher bag. If it's a more firmer bag, those usually last a lot longer from just playing with them. If they're softer, they tend to get rid of those and shed those easier and go to a new one. Like my Rajas last for months for like a couple of these little ones, like the Aima and whatnot. They don't last as long. Same with Diotis, it sheds it periodically, as you can see. I actually have a new one on the other side. So, they're a very interesting species of plant. They are a vine, so as you can see from this, this is a good example, they basil, they start very small, kind of like a little bushy plant, and then they shoot out like a vine, <laughs> grabbing, grappling, and wrapping around things. So please make sure you're aware of that. They don't save this cute little bushy thing forever, which is part of my problem is trying to find places to put them. As I started with a bunch of really small ones and they slowly started growing really rapidly. I just think because I live in a valley, the conditions I have are similar to what they would naturally feel temperature wise. It makes them feel better. It's like uh, this one I got as a unknown plant. I love the coloring in this new picture. This is literally its newest picture. It is an unknown species. I discern it to be. A spectabulous because of the way it angles and wraps down, but also has truncata, truncated leaves and cells, so I believe it to be a spectabulous truncata. It might not actually be that unless I genetically test it. So, there's that. Actually, there's uh, my other diotis right there. Nice big leaf jump on that. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, if you have any questions or comments or inquiries about certain species I have, if I have it, I'll say, yes, I have this. I can do spotlights if I have the species. If I don't, I can't. Sorry.